All right. Uh, hi, my name is Charlie. I'm a software engineer um, at Stripe. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about accepting payments in your React Native app, uh, why you might want to use Stripe to do it, and then kind of finish off with a summary of the React Native story at Stripe. Cool. Uh, so to start off, I've got a really tough question for everyone, which is uh, why are payments important? Um, Hopefully, most of you got the answer. It's to make money. Um, so obviously, we need to make money without collecting payments. Users can't pay us for all of our awesome features uh, and also the fun bugs that we ship. So that's basically it. Um, yeah, talk is over. I'll see you guys later. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, maybe that question was a little too easy. Um, let's ask a better one. So what makes payments difficult uh, in an app? So first of all, payment flows are usually pretty complex. Uh, they're involving a lot of asynchronous communication, a uh, whole bunch of error states. You gotta think about retry logic and uh, validation, fraud, disputes. Um, so there's kind of a lot to think about. On top of that, security is also a really big issue with payments, obviously. Uh, so the more data you collect from your users, the more appealing you are um, to some sort of attacker. Uh, and that threat obviously grows enormously once payment data enters the scene since it's so much more volatile. Um, and so that's why the payment industry has something called PCI standards or payment card industry standards. This is essentially the most boring topic I could ever talk to you about, um, but it's just rules for how to deal with payment data and store it. Um, so ideally, you avoid this completely by only collecting payments, but not any payment data, which is a little complicated. Um, but we'll get back to that later. Um, also, payment flows are uh, just complex, like I mentioned earlier, so that means they're hard to test. End-to-end -end tests are essentially your only option, and even then, uh, it's hard to test every payment method that you want to use. Speaking of payment methods, if you are operating globally, um, you have to build out support for a lot of different payment methods. So not many developers want to build multiple checkout scenarios uh, for all the different payment methods out there. Um, of which there are a whole lot. So before I started at Stripe, I was very much the ignorant American that assumed the whole world just used credit cards. Um, thank God I'm not a business owner because if you make that assumption as a business owner, you are alienating a huge portion of your user base, but you're missing out on a lot of uh, potential revenue as well. So these pie charts that are up there kind of show the breakdown of different payment methods per country. Um, the UK is exactly what I kind of stupidly thought the whole world was like, which is most people use credit cards or Apple Pay and Google Pay. Um, but then you look at a place like Malaysia, which is 50% you know, bank transfers or bank debits, and then you move to Mexico, which is a whole bunch of like cash, and uh, OXO, which is like this voucher that they use over there, um, which plug Stripe now supports, which is great. Um, but yeah, so back to what makes payments difficult, coding up the checkout flow for all those payment methods, having a ton of different screens, not super fun, not super easy. Um, and yeah, kind of this list could get really long, optimizing conversion rates to make sure customers do check out, validating that card data, handling fraud and disputes. So yeah, long list. Um, if you're excited to handle all of this by yourself, you are 10 times a better developer than I am. Uh, I would rather not think about any of it, just work on my actual product, and not have to think about a checkout experience. So let's assume for the sake of this talk that you're like me and you'd rather not spend all your time reading financial institution documentation um, and wouldn't it be cool if we could just accept payments and not really worry about any of the stuff on that last slide. Uh, so spoiler, that's exactly what Stripe attempts to do for you. Um, and I think we actually do it pretty well. I am heavily biased, so let's go through some examples of what Stripe React Native does, and you can kind of decide for yourself whether or not it's useful. So we're going to go through two examples of collecting payments. Uh, the first one is you're going to build out your own checkout page, basically. Um, if you want that, that's great. And then one that provides a fully built out checkout solution for you. So if you've ever done any web development with Stripe, this is very similar to Stripe Elements, which is individual components that you'd embed in your uh, web page, versus like a hosted checkout where Stripe handles all of it for you end to end. Um, both solutions are great. Both take a couple lines of code. It all depends on kind of what you need and how much control and work you want to make for yourself. OK, cool. So uh, we're just going to jump right into the first component where you're just going to build your own checkout screen. So we have a really plain app here. Um, as you can see on the right, we are selling sweet potatoes. The UI is beautiful. I'm an amazing UI designer. 
um, and the customer knows what they're buying, so now we just need to let them buy it. Uh, all right, cool. So now, as you can see on the right, there is a place for a customer to input their card info. So let's kind of step by step go through what we added. Uh, first of all, we have our Stripe provider component. Um, pretty simple. You are providing your Stripe publishable key, which is like any other API key. Uh, component takes a little more options, but this is really all we need for now. And then this essentially just initializes the SDK for us. So next up, we have our card field component. Uh, we can collect card details here. It validates the card number in the moment. Uh, it's stylable, customizable, all that good stuff. Um, and then, yeah, we've got a just regular React Native button. Um, but the two questions are, what is this buy function that we're calling on press? And then what's this loading Boolean that we're using for the disable function? Um, so yeah, let's take a look at what those are. Cool. Uh, so here's all our Stripe logic for this component. We have a, a hook here at the top, which is essentially just helping us import what we need from Stripe. So this is the method we need, confirm payment, uh, and this loading Boolean, which essentially tells us, like, is this confirm payment method running? Um, so that way, if it is, we know disable that buy button, don't let the user spam us with a whole bunch of processes. Uh, we don't really want that. Cool. Um, so now kind of walking through this buy function that we have, before we confirm this payment that we want the user to go through, uh, we need to know what exactly it is we're confirming. So Stripe handles this with something called payment intents, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a customer's intent to pay you. So this includes like all the relevant data, um, like how much they're paying you, what currency it in, uh, what currency it is in, and then any meta metadata about the payment. Um, so yeah, we have to grab that from our kind of fake server that we have going on here, because um, you don't want to create those client side just for security reasons. Um, and then we can pass that secret that we're getting back from our server uh, to confirm the payment intent along with our payment method type, which in this case is a card. Um, and then voila, you're done. You've accepted a payment uh, as long as you don't get an error back. Um, so the Stripe SDK is smart enough in the background to kind of pull that data from the card field. You don't have to like link it or anything like that. Um, and this means that you aren't directly handling any payment data. So PCI compliance is a breeze. You essentially just like check a box on a form and you're done. Um, and yeah, to prove I'm not hiding a bunch of work in that fetch payment intent secret thing that like you'd have to do on the back end, uh, this is all of the server code you would need. You're essentially using Stripe's Node SDK. It's like five lines of code. Uh, create a customer. Create that payment intent uh, for 50 bucks uh, or 50 USD. And yeah, send that back. Super easy. So uh, this flow has a whole bunch of pros. Uh, we have very little code to collect payments, which is great. We're not handling card data, so PCI is really easy. Security is easy. Um, we're getting that verification of card details right in the card component, and then a whole bunch of customization options if we want them. Uh, but it's still pretty bad in a lot of ways. So. First of all, the same thing I was talking about before, we only have card support in this. A person can't input their you know, bank account number into the card field and pay that way. Um, if they want to come back and buy more sweet potatoes, they have to input their card again, or we have to create some sort of like logic to remember their payment method. Uh, we have to design this checkout page, so that's a lot of design work to do. And then, yeah, again, we have to re-implement this for every new payment method. So what if we could get rid of all these cons um, make our users' lives better and also make our lives as developers easier. Um, so let's say we have a couple new requirements for a V2 of our checkout page. So uh, number one, we don't want to spend time creating some custom checkout screen. We just want a button and that's it. Um, we also want to easily support every payment method that's supported by Stripe out of the box. Um, and if Stripe adds some, we want to get those for free, and we don't really want to have to like update our app and make our users re-download a new version of the app just to get a new payment method. Um, and then finally, we want our customers to kind of have a great and seamless checkout experience, meaning we remember their old payment methods um, and kind of stuff like that. So we're going to start over with our component here. Uh, we're still initializing Stripe with our Stripe provider, but we've obviously taken out the card field component. We just have our buy button, uh, so let's kind of take a look at uh, what this buy button does now. OK, the video goes very quickly, um, but <laughs> you can see that the payment sheet kind of gets launched, um, which is you know, exactly what the uh, payment sheet is. And now we're going to take a look at the code that's kind of behind the payment sheet. Um, so yeah, the payment sheet is a self-contained checkout experience. 
uh, presented in this bottom sheet and provides kind of like a streamlined, reliable experience across Android and iOS. Uh, the code for it, really simple, but we can go through it step by step. So number one, we're using that hook again from Stripe uh, to grab everything we need. So we've got the init payment sheet function, the present payment sheet function, uh, and that loading bo uh, Boolean that I talked about before. Um, cool, and in our uh, setup function, uh, which you'd call like in use effect or beforehand, whatever you want, um, we're grabbing params from the server just like we did last time. Um, although this time we have two new params that we're grabbing. I'll kind of show you the additional code that's necessary, but it's, it's really little. Um, yeah, then we're calling initialize payment sheet with those parameters, really, really easy. Um, and yeah, once our customer clicks buy, they click buy, we present the payment sheet, once it's closed or canceled, we resolve either with an error or the payment was successful, and that's it. Super easy. We had basically no UI work to do at all besides that button. Um, and yeah, here's the server endpoint we'd theoretically be hitting. It's essentially the same thing as last time, except we added this ephemeral key logic, which uh, this key gives the Stripe mobile SDK a bit more power, so we can send that back along with the uh, payment intent client secret, our customer ID, um, and then yeah, you're good to go. That's your server code. So maybe a lot of you are thinking, okay, cool, that's great, um, but I really don't like the idea of having like a separate UI. Uh, I'd rather control all my UI, stick with the card field, and spend that time building new checkout screens for like SEPA debit or other payment methods. Um, so that's fine if you feel that way, uh, but I do want to give uh, get you to give me a chance to kind of go through a couple more reasons why to use the payment sheet and why it's so cool. So uh, first of all, integrating Apple Pay and Google Pay, super easy, barely any work. You just have to pass some JSON into the init payment sheet function, and then boom, uh, on iOS, you get the little Apple Pay section for your customers, and on Android, you'd see a similar uh, Google Pay option. Uh, plus, the payment sheet allows you to kind of customize your checkout experience in a lot of different ways. So one of these would be this custom flow prop. Uh, when you pass it as true, you separate out the steps of actually picking a payment method versus confirming the purchase. Uh, so this way, you kind of have more control over the actual checkout portion, and mostly what Stripe is handling for you is like payment method creation. Um, so if you want to do some sort of checks after a payment method was added, but before checking out, you can do that really easily. Um, yeah, stuff like that. And then finally, appearance. So one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got about the payment sheet when it was originally launched was this is really cool for like a proof of concept, but the UI doesn't really flow with our app at all. Uh, it feels really jarring, yanks the user out of this like immersive app experience we've got going on, um, and that really sucks. So luckily now there's a way to handle that as well. Um, again, just like really easy JSON to handle, and you can control the look and feel of your payment sheet super easily. So maybe all my sweet potato buyers are big users of VS Code's One Dark theme, and so now they can go to my checkout screen and be like, oh my god, I'm basically in VS Code, this is amazing. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, okay, finally, and this is probably payment sheet's like biggest upside. Ugh. This is a video, and it played when I tested it, but now it's not playing, which is so unfortunate. But, um, okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, basically, Payment Sheet's biggest upside is adding new payment methods uh, takes no client-side code whatsoever. So you don't have to deploy or anything like that. You just go to your server, uh, and where you're passing payment method types card in that first block there, you just add more strings of payment methods that you want to collect. And essentially, that's it. So now you're collecting more payment method data, or payment method types um, without deploying a new app version or asking your users to update. And so that's really, really great for you, for your users, for Stripe, um, for everyone. So, oh, okay, yeah, here's the video. Not gonna let the whole thing play. It's basically just me typing in different words. Not super interesting, but you get the picture. Super easy to do. Um, and yeah, so if your payment sheet supports multiple payment methods, this is what it looks like. Your payment options are all displayed in this carousel for your users to choose from. Um, and then on top of that, you don't have to worry too much about app review. Um, for those of you have, that haven't integrated a payment kind of checkout experience in your app, uh, app review is really particular about where and how big Apple Pay is displayed. Same with Google Pay. Uh, you don't have to worry about this. It's annoying to get a rejection for that, but uh, yeah, you won't have to worry about it. So that's great, and that's basically payment sheet in a nutshell. So. Uh, now that we've gone through why you might use Stripe React Native, I wanted to briefly, really quick, talk about the story of React Native at Stripe. 
So I'm really happy to say that React Native is a core piece of Stripe's mobile offering. Um, we're starting to consider it now from the very beginning of designing mobile flows rather than kind of as an afterthought of the iOS and Android SDKs, which is really great for React Native as a whole, or my experience as a React Native developer. Um, and then, yeah, we've seen more and more merchants at Stripe move or start on React Native, which is really exciting because it kind of proves how uh, React Native is just growing in popularity, not just in you know, smaller use cases, but even some of the biggest apps out there. And some of like, the new payment methods that Stripe will launch, like we want React Native there from the get-go because we have this big user that's on React Native that really wants to use it. Um, so that's just been really exciting to see. And then, yeah, React Native uh, kind of follows really closely or essentially in step with our other mobile SDKs to the point where um, they're all in step feature-wise. So no platform is left without, no developer is left without. Uh, and yeah, really cool, featured really prominently in our docs. This was just like a kind of cool thing to see happen at Stripe, which is it has like the web, iOS, Android, and now React Native. So uh, yeah, kind of great. Like, like React isn't even up there. It says web, but it says React Native, which is so cool, I think. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the React Native story at Stripe. So I bet you're thinking, oh, OK, cool. So Stripe provides a payments library for React Native. Makes total sense, like Stripe is a payments company. Um, but wait, there's actually more. Stripe isn't just a payments company. So there's a lot more to it. Um, first of all, this is still sort of payments, but uh, the SDK comes with first class Apple and Google Pay support, including kind of finer details like push provisioning, which is adding a new card to your user's digital wallet. Um, this is actually a really complicated flow natively, and I don't really understand why, uh, but in React Native, it's as simple as just rendering this uh, add to wallet button component, and you're done. Um, so Stripe issuing makes that really, really easy. Uh, next up, we have a, a new Know Your Customer Stripe uh, React Native library, which is Stripe Identity. And so this allows you to verify the identities of you know, users using an ID card or a passport, something like that. Um, this is really useful for anyone that's familiar with Stripe Connect. Um, so let's say you have like a rideshare platform and you want to verify your drivers or something like that. You would use Stripe Identity to kind of scan their ID or something like that. Um, and yeah, let them you know, use your platform. Uh, cool. And then, oh, okay, well, that's the video, but yeah, scanning ID, super, super fun. Um, okay, and then point of sale. So brand new product for Stripe. I actually don't have a demo for it, which is unfortunate, um, but is Stripe Terminal. And Stripe Terminal is a point of sale, so you can collect payments in person, right on your phone, like tap to pay and all that kind of stuff. Um, like I said, I don't have a demo with me, but I will link the, the repo, because it's open source, uh, in Discord afterwards. So yeah, and there's more on the way that we're working on. I feel like really the, the React Native story at Stripe is just starting and kind of picking up speed as we go. So I'm really excited to see what else Stripe starts to do in the, the React Native sphere. And yeah, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this talk. Uh, thanks to Callstack for hosting an awesome conference so far. Excited to see the rest of the speakers today. And uh, yeah, I'll be around to answer any questions or uh, gather feedback. If you've used Stripe React Native, definitely come and talk to me. Would love to hear what you thought. That's it.